Hi everybody, I'm Kevin and I found a dinosaur in my backyard. I was building a pond on my property in central Montana. As part of the construction, a road needed to be cut into the hillside to access the dam and fields on the south side of the stream. After the pond was completed, I needed to clean up rocks and debris so that seed could be planted on the disturbed areas. I had just finished disking and harrowing the area and stepped out of my tractor to see what needed to be picked up before the seeding could begin. Something caught my eye at the edge of the road a few feet away. I bent down and picked up what appeared to be a rock, but it wasn't. As soon as I picked it up, I knew what it was. A giant dinosaur vertebra. I was stunned. All I could do was look at it in amazement. I just found a dinosaur bone. How cool is that? I searched the road and bank, but could not find where it came from before dark. I called Ken Olson. He's an associate with the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana, and he just lives a few miles from here. I read about Ken a few years ago about some dinosaurs that he'd found in our area over a period of 30 years, including the largest dinosaur skull ever found. I made a call to Ken, and he agreed to meet with me to take a look at my find. My vertebra looked very different than that of a Cretaceous-era duck-billed dinosaur that he brought to the meeting. The duck bill bones were the color of Coca-Cola. My bone was much heavier and a much lighter color, tinted pink by the color of the soil I found it in. Ken said he believed I had a bone from a Jurassic era dinosaur. I asked what the difference was. He said about 80 million years. Cretaceous dinosaurs like the one he had existed about 70 million years ago. Mine, he said, was probably closer to 150 million years old. Iconic Jurassic dinosaurs included sauropods, the largest dinosaurs that ever lived. Ken agreed to come to my place the next day to help me look for more of the dinosaur. There was a gold layer that I'd never seen anything like in the more than 15 years I owned the property. I'd never seen anything like it anywhere in Montana in 40 years, and there were clumps of gray and red mixed in with it. I wondered if this could be the layer that more bones were in. It really stood out against the red and purple layers in the cut. I learned that the Morrison layer in the Jurassic era had layers in almost every color of the rainbow. We didn't find another piece that day, despite my dogs helping to look. I would continue to search after every rain for more clues as the dust washed down the hillside. Ken went on to tell me that in 30 years of looking for fossils in our area, he'd only seen two or three examples from the Jurassic area. I researched online and found out there had only been three or four locations in Montana where Jurassic fossils had been found since the 1880s. I cleaned the vertebra with a pocket knife to see more detail while I figured out my next step. I decided to contact the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana to see what they thought. I emailed a picture of my vertebra to Scott Williams at the museum because I saw in his profile that he had worked on excavating dinosaurs and fossils from the Jurassic formation known as the Morrison layer. A few days later, I made the trip to Bozeman with my find. Scott and Dr. John Scanella, the curator of paleontology at the Museum of the Rockies, met me at the door. We walked around the museum looking for potential matches in the displays. We couldn't find a match for sure, but John and Scott were able to rule out theropods, meat-eating dinosaurs like Allosaurus. They have a much different structure on their vertebrae. They're also about 90% sure that it wasn't a sauropod, one of the giants of the Jurassic era. I asked what was left, and they said, not many for a dinosaur as big as mine. They were also able to determine that the vertebra was from the tail and called a caudal vertebra. Scott took some photos of the vertebra so he could share them with other paleontologists and see what they thought. After we were done, I toured the museum's world-class displays and wondered just how rare my dinosaur might be. More than 90% of the displays were from the Cretaceous period. Mine was likely from the Jurassic. Could it be a Stegosaurus, a Camptosaurus? The size would be about right compared to the vertebra that I found. There's even a place in the museum where you can watch dinosaurs being cleaned and prepared through a window in the lab. I searched the road bank through the rest of the summer, fall, and winter. I found some things that kind of looked like bone pieces, but found out later they were not. I finally found another bone the following May, nine months after searching. Rain had washed soil down the bank and exposed it. I had found the bedding layer for a dinosaur 300 feet from my back door. It was obvious that there could be a lot of dinosaur there with so many vertebrae close together. After another week of rain, 
more bones began to appear. I let the museum know that I'd found more bones. They suggested that I call Carrie Woodruff, the curator at the Great Plains Museum in Malta, Montana. I learned that he's an expert in sauropods from the Jurassic era. Carrie was happy to come and take a look. Carrie studied the bones at the site and determined that they did not belong to a sauropod dinosaur. That left Stegosaurus and Camptosaurus as the most likely species. Carrie pointed to the vertebrae that were exposed and said that while it wasn't a sauropod, it was from a pretty large dinosaur. Carrie walked up the hill and looked at some exposed sandstone layers for clues. He checked to see if there was a marine layer with sea organisms in the rock. Seeing none, he returned to the bones and covered them to protect them from the weather until I decided what I wanted to do with them. I had several options on what I could do with my dinosaur. I could dig it up and keep it for myself. I could dig up parts and sell them on eBay. Or I could contract with a company that would excavate, clean and prepare it, and sell it at auction where I'd get a small percentage of the profits. I already knew that it wasn't a meat-eating dinosaur, and those are the ones that can sell for millions. My dinosaur might not be worth the cost to excavate, clean, and prepare it. My kids are grown, my land's paid for, and I didn't have any financial need. I could also donate my dinosaur to a museum. I'd been fascinated by fossils since I was six, and science played a big part of my education. After careful consideration, I decided to donate my dinosaur to the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana. I'd gone to college in Bozeman, and three of my daughters graduated from Montana State University. I thought this would be a great place to keep my dinosaur so the children of Montana could see it for years to come. I notified the museum of my decision and signed the donation paperwork. They told me they would come to my place for a one-day mini-excavation later that summer. A couple of weeks before they arrived, I discovered that more bone had been uncovered by erosion. Some of these bones didn't look like vertebrae. It seemed like there was a new bone every few inches, and I found some bone fragments. These were possibly 150 million year old bones. The last T-Rex died 66 million years ago. The museum crew arrived and got to work. The team began removing soil around the bones and brushing dust off of them. A one meter grid square was used so that the bone locations could be drawn on the quarry map to show what went where along with the distances between them. Levi, on the left in the blue, uncovered what appeared to be a rib. The amount of bones so close together could be a sign that a lot more of the dinosaur was there and not scattered around. Levi was able to uncover a rib-looking bone back to and underneath the sandstone layer. This is what's known as a cap rock covering the fossils. This was also another good sign that a lot of the dinosaur could be there and also protected by the rock. Dr. John Scanella and Levi attempted to uncover the rest of the rib so they could try and take that back, but the sandstone layer was too thick to safely break at that time. The museum removed three vertebrae to take back to the lab for study. The rest was covered by a layer of paper towels, aluminum foil, and burlap soaked in plaster to protect the bones until the next excavation. Several months later, I visited the lab at the Museum of the Rockies to see the cleaned and prepared vertebrae. The one on the far right side is the first one I found. The Museum of the Rockies will return next time with a full crew for a week of major excavation. Let's find out what kind of dinosaur this is and how big it is. I want to make it very clear. This dinosaur was found on private property by the legal owner. It is rare to find a dinosaur on private property. It is illegal for anyone to remove a fossil from private, state, or federal lands without permission. You will not get permission to remove a dinosaur fossil from state or federal property as a private individual. If you remove a fossil, you can be charged with up to felony theft. Just search dinosaur theft online. Most dinosaurs in the United States are found on state or federal property, especially the Federal Bureau of Land Management and Bureau of Reclamation in the West, but can also be found on U.S. Forest Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service land. Museums must obtain a permit to search for and excavate fossils on public land. If you find what you think is part of the dinosaur, take a picture and GPS location and send those to the department's antiquity managers or your local museum. Do not take it home. There are web links to the two museums mentioned during this video in the description below. Both are part of the Montana Dinosaur Trail, with museums at 14 locations in the heart of Montana Dinosaur. The Great Plains Dinosaur Museum is located in Malta, Montana, 
It is the home to Leonardo, a mummified dinosaur that is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most detailed and complete mummified dinosaur ever discovered. The Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana, houses the largest collection of dinosaur remains in the United States and possesses the largest Tyrannosaurus skull ever discovered. The Museum of the Rockies is the number one indoors attraction in Montana. It also now owns the dinosaur I found in my backyard. Be sure to join me on the next episode of Backyard Dinosaur by subscribing to the Wildlife Channel and turn on the notifications by ringing the bell.